Let's read Fly Guy's Amazing Trick. So let's start Fly Guy's Amazing Trick. A boy had a pet fly. He named him Fly Guy. And Fly Guy could say the boy's name. Buzz. Chapter 1. Buzz's friends came to see the Amazing Fly Guy Circus. Buzz said, get ready for Fly Guy's Amazing New Trick. Now, said Buzz, look at the backstroke. Now, said Buzz, the dizzy doozy. And now, said Buzz, the big booger. Time for supper, said Mom. Buzz's friends all went home. Chapter 2 At the dinner table, Buzz said, Fly Guy learn new tricks. Fly Guy did the backstroke in Mom's milk. Buzz cried, Stop Fly Guy, but Fly Guy didn't hear him. Fly Guy did the dizzy doozy around Dad's head. Buzz cried, Stop Fly Guy, but Fly Guy didn't hear him. Fly Guy did the big booger. Buzz caught him. Stop, Fly Guy, he said. Let's clean up this mess. Chapter 3 Outside, Buzz said to Fly Guy, I have an idea. Do your tricks only when you hear the word now. A big cake walked by. He left. Are you talking to a bug? Buzz didn't answer. The kid said, Do you have bug brains? Buzz and danced it. The kid said, Bug got your tongue? Buzz didn't answer. Answer me, yelled the kid. Now! Fly Guy heard the word now. Fly Guy did the backstroke. Then Fly Guy did the dizzy doozy. And then Fly Guy did the big booger. The Kid yelled, get out of my face. He bumped right into a barbage can. A zillion angry flies chased the big kid away. Buzz said, Fly Guy, here's a new trick for you. Yes. High fives. The end. Snail and Worm by Tina Kogler Meet my friend. Hello, want to play? Let's play. Tag, you are it. Can you catch me? No, no, no. Ready, set, go. Catch me. I win. I am fast. You are slow. Hello, are you talking to a rock? A rock? That rock is Bob. Hi, Bob. This stick is Anne. How do you do? Do you want to play? Yes, I want to play. Anne, you are it. Snail's adventure. Wow, look at that tall flower. That is a tall flower. I want to be tall too. I wish I could climb to the top of that flower. Do you think I can? I am so small. The flower is very, very tall. You can do it. Okay, I will try. Will you watch me? Yes, I will watch you. Here I go. You can do it. You can climb that tall flower. I am climbing. Go, go, go. I am almost to the top. You are almost there. I did it. You did it. Wow, I can see so much from up here. Wow, they look like ants down there. Wow, I can see my house. I did it. Are you proud of me? I am very proud of you. Now, how do I get down? Meet my pet. My pet is lost. Will you help me find my pet? Yes, I will help. What does your pet look like? Well, he has legs. Is he a spider? Spiders have legs. He is big and furry. 
Spiders are big. Spiders are furry. He is brown. I bet he is a spider. He is a sharp teeth. Oh my, he must be a spider. Oh, here he comes. Spider! This is Sam. He is nice. Oh, that is a big spider. I am glad he is nice. Thank you for helping me find him. Hey, here comes my pet. His name is Rex. Oh, hello, Rex. Rex is a good dog. Are you sure? Yes, I am sure. He is very good. I have to take Rex for a walk now. Follow me, boy. The End Annie and Snowball and the Grandmother Night by Cynthia Rylance Someone Special Annie loved her family. She loved her aunts and uncles and cousins, especially Henry. She loved her father and her bunny Snowball. Snowball was family to Annie. And someone she loved in a very special way. It was her grandmother. One night every month, Annie stayed at her grandmother's house. And a grandmother night was tonight. Annie wanted to pack all her stuffed animals. But Annie's dad said that she should take two. Oh dear, who to take? Annie chose two little mice. She promised the other animals that they would get a grandmother night too. They all looked happy about that. Annie said to Snowball, I'm glad you weren't stuffed. You always get to go. Grandmother. On the drive to Grandmother's house, Annie read books to her dad. Her dad liked funny books the best, so Annie read joke books to him. They laughed and laughed. Snowball took a long nap. When they finally arrived, Grandmother was standing at her door. She scooped Annie and Snowball into her arms. She was smiling so brightly, she told Annie that her hair looked pretty and that she liked Annie's sparkly shoes. Grandmother told Snowball that Snowball was a very good bunny. She gave Annie's dad a kiss on the cheek, then she brought them into her house. Grandmother had the best house. It was soft and warm, just like her. It had soft chairs. It had pretty lamps. It had a bowl full of peppermints. Even had a budgie. The budgie's name was Marty. Annie loved Marty. She said hello to him and gave a bit of Snowball's apple. Marty bounced and chirped. Like grandmother, he loved company. Everyone felt so happy. Just girls. Annie's dad had a cup of tea and then he said goodbye. You girls have fun, he said as he left. We will, said Annie and grandmother. Then they went right to the kitchen. Baking cookies was always at the top of their list. While the cookies baked, they played a game of tic-tac-toe. Annie called it tic-tac cookie dough. Later, they ate cookies and watched their favorite movie. It was about three lost pets who find their way home. If Snowball ever gets lost, said Annie, Mudge would find her. Mudge was cousin Henry's big dog that Annie loved. After the movie, Annie and Grandmother said goodnight to Marty. Grandmother put a nice cover over his cage. Marty liked to sleep in the dark. Sweet dreams, Marty, said Annie. It was time for bed. Time to go. Annie and Grandmother always did three things before bed. First, they washed up. Then, they braided each other's hair. Then, they told each other a story. It was always a story from their lives. Tonight, Annie told Grandmother the story of visiting the zoo with Cousin Henry's family. Grandmother told Annie the story of learning to ride a horse when she was small. They loved story time. They learned a lot about each other. The stories always gave them good dreams. The next morning, Annie's dad came to take her home. First, they all had blueberry pancakes. Then, they all went for a walk. Then, it was time to go home. Annie thanked her grandmother for such a nice time. Grandmother hugged her and told Annie she loved her. Then, Annie said goodbye to Marty, and Grandmother said goodbye to Snowball. I can't wait to come back again, said Annie. She got in the car and waved and waved to Grandmother. 
How was your night? asked Annie's dad. Annie smiled. Just perfect, she said. The end. Pig makes art. So let's start. Pig makes art. Cat snorts. Pig adds a dog. Cat snorts. Pig adds a fog and a log. Cat snorts. Pig adds a frog on the log. Cat snorts. Cat takes a nap. Pig adds dots. Pig adds lots and lots of dots. Pig adds spots. Pig adds lots and lots of spots. Pig snorts. Cat wakes up. Cat snorts. Pig runs. Cat makes art. Pig snorts. Pig makes art. Cat makes art. The end. Henry and Mudge and the Long Weekend by Cynthia Ryland. Chapter 1 Wet Yuck. Henry and Henry's big dog Mudge woke up one Saturday in February and looked outside. Yuck, said Henry. It was gray, it was cold, it was muddy and wet. No sun, Henry said. No snow, just yuck, wet yuck. Mudge leaned against Henry and drooled. What are we going to do all weekend? Henry asked. Mudge leaned harder. How will we have some fun? Henry grumbled. Mudge leaned harder still. What a boring weekend, Henry growled. Mudge let go and leaned all the way. Whoa, yelled Henry. Mudge flattened Henry like a pancake. How are we going to get up? Henry wondered. Chapter 2 Bored Henry and Mudge had a boring breakfast. They watched some boring cartoons. They listened to Henry's father tell some boring jokes. Boy, is this boring, said Henry. What are we going to do? he asked. Mudge knew what to do. Mudge always knew what to do if there was nothing interesting to eat, nothing interesting to smell, and nothing interesting to chew. He went to sleep. No, Mudge, said Henry, giving him a push. Wake up. Mudge sat up. He wanted to stay awake. He tried to stay awake, but everything was so boring that he couldn't. His eyes kept closing, his head kept nodding, his mouth kept drooling. Exciting dog you have there, said Henry's father. He's bored, said Henry. Mudge is bored. I'm bored. Boy, is this boring. Henry's father frowned. February cranks, he asked. Henry nodded. Winter grumpies? Henry nodded again. Pre-spring meanies? Okay, dad, okay, Henry said. Boy, are you bored, said Henry's father. The three of them sat. Their eyes kept closing, their heads kept nodding, and one of their mouths kept drooling. Henry's mother saw them. Goodness, she said, this is going to be a long weekend. Then she had an idea. Chapter 3 The Idea I have an idea, Henry's mother said. Henry opened his eyes. Henry's father sat up, but Mudge kept on sleeping. He didn't care much about ideas. Not until the idea smelled like something. Let's make a castle, said Henry's mother. A castle, said Henry and Henry's father. We still have the box the new refrigerator came in, and the box the new stove came in. Henry was getting the idea. And that paint that Uncle Arthur gave me, said Henry. Let's do it. They headed for the basement. Mudge was still trying to sleep. But when he heard voices in the basement, he woke up fast. Mudge loved the basement. It had millions of new smells. It had lots of places to hide, and some of his old dog toys were down there. 
Come on, Mudge, Henry called. The Mudge was already on his way. Chapter 4 Down in the Basement It has to have turrets, Henry's father said, and a drawbridge, and a buttresses, and flags. Dad, said Henry, it's just a refrigerator box. Not for long, said Henry's father. Henry ran upstairs for his castle book. Henry's mother ran upstairs for pencils. Henry's father ran upstairs for a stapler. And Mudge ran upstairs for a quick snack. They all looked at each other in the kitchen. How'd we all get up here again? asked Henry's father. When they got back to the basement, Henry opened up his castle book. Let's make this one, he said. Henry's father took a look. Henry's mother took a look. Okay, they said. One of them drew, one of them cut, one of them stapled. And one of them went looking for an old boot he used to chew. They all worked a long time until somebody said, Is anyone hungry? Order a pizza, said Henry's father. We can't stop now. They worked a while longer until the pizza came. They stopped and ate pizza. While they stared at the castle they were building, they each imagined how it would look when it was done. For the rest of the afternoon, they cut out fancy windows and fancy doors. They cut out turrets and buttresses and flags. Mudge chewed his old boot like crazy. When evening came and Henry finally had to crawl into bed, he could hardly wait to finish the castle. He could hardly wait for more of the long weekend. Chapter 5 A Great Weekend Henry woke up. He looked outside. Why he yuck? he said. But he didn't care. We have a castle to finish, he told Mudge. Henry and Henry's father ate some cold cereal and ran to the basement. Henry's mother stayed in the kitchen to read the morning paper. She was always better at thinking up ideas than at finishing them. Besides, she said, you have to have somebody to surprise. Henry and Henry's father painted the castle all morning. While they worked, Mudge sniffed screwdrivers and paint cans and dirty rags and beach balls and Christmas decorations and a stuffed turkey. He had also tried to eat a spider, but he missed. Henry and Henry's father were very quiet. They wanted to pay attention. They wanted to do a good job. Every now and then, Henry's mother would call out, Is there a life down there? Finally, close to lunchtime, Henry looked at his father. His father looked at him. Wow, they both said. Come look, come look, they called up the stairs. Henry's mother went to the top of the stairs. Not yet, not yet, they called. She waited. Okay, okay, they called. She went down the stairs, and there she saw the most beautiful castle, and the most beautiful knights, and the most beautiful king she'd ever seen. They all spent a long time admiring the castle. They took turns sitting in it. They stuck their heads through its windows. They opened and closed its doors. They lowered its drawbridge over and over. Henry was thrilled. He gave his parents a big hug. He gave Mudge a big hug. What a weekend, said Henry. The king gave him a big lick. And what a great king. The end. Going somewhere. So let's start going somewhere. Seattle. Seattle go. See Pip. See Pip go too. Where are we going? asks Pip. Nowhere, says Otto. Oh, says Pip. Are we there yet? No, says Otto. Not yet. I see, says Pip. How about now, says Pip. Nope, says Otto. Now, asked Pip. No, sir, said Otto. Is this nowhere? Asks Pip. Not at all, says Otto. I did not think 
Lisa says Pip. Yay! We are back home where we started, said Pip. See, says Lana. We went nowhere. Oh, says Pip. Can we go there again? The end. Skit and the little llamas. Here we go! Biscuit and the Little Llamas. It's a great spring day on the farm. Biscuit. Woof, woof. There's always something new to see in spring. Woof, woof. This way, Biscuit. Let's see what we can find. Woof, woof. Look, Biscuit. There are the piglets. Wink, wink. Woof, woof. You found a new cold too. <laughs> Funny puppy, what do you see now? <laughs> no talking biscuits. Let's see what else new on the farm. <laughs> Over here, biscuit, there are soft lambs and goats. <laughs> oh no. Biscuit, not again. Oof. Come along now, Biscuit. There is so much to see on the farm. Let's see what else we can find. Oi, Biscuit, come back. The chicks are over here. Oof, oof. Silly puppy, it's not time to play tug. Biscuit, let it go. Oof. Oh, Biscuit, what did you find now? You found a little llama. Biscuit. Woof, woof. Funny puppy. Another llama. I found you. Woof, woof. You can run and play with the llamas, Biscuit. Woof. You can lead the llamas to the fresh green grass. Woof. You can lead them, too, to new friends. It's fun to see what's new on the farm in Spring Biscuit. It's even more fun to find something new all by yourself. The end for Otto. Let's start for Otto. See? Otto feels sad. No, wait. Here comes Mo. Hugs. Otto feels glad. I love hugs. Oops. Poor Otto. Oh, wait. Here comes Flop. Pie. I love pie. See, Otto feels glad. Oof. Poor Otto. No, wait. Kite. Here comes Pip. Stop. I get it. It is not for me. Well, I do not care. I do not even like kites. But I made it for you. You did? Yes, then I love kites. See, Otto feels good. Who wants pie? And a hug. The end. A pet. The sound of P. So let's start. A pet. The sound of P. I took my pack. I put my pack on my back. I went to find the pet. I met a pet on the path. I met a pet at the pond. I picked the pet as my pal. He jumped right into my pack. My pet makes me happy. My pal and I are friends. Word list. Happy, pen, jumped, pet, pack.
pack, her picked pal, pond, path, put. The end. Let's read Wonderful You with the Grouchy Ladybug. So let's start. Be you. Follow your heart and your imagination. Be silly. Laugh and smile. And dance for all to say. Be curious. Explore near and far. This and discover something new. Be grouchy. A little brain makes sunny days even brighter. Be glad. Play with friends and share your gifts with the world. Be proud of who you are. Celebrate you. Just be you makes the world special too. The end. Black Cats by Megan Cooley Peterson. Fearless felines. Dead leaves crunch under your feet as you trick or treat on Halloween. Suddenly, a black cat darts in front of you. Hiss! Black cats have scared people for hundreds of years. They arch their bags, their big eyes glow. The black cat is a popular Halloween symbol. Witches in black cats. In the 1500s and 1600s, people believed that some women had magical powers. They were called witches. Some witches had black cats. Many people feared witches and their cats. They believed cats held a witch's spirit. A witch's cat could even put spells on people. People also thought witches could turn into black cats. They told tales of witches and cats flying on a broomstick. Black Cat Features A black cat's body is perfect for roaming at night. Its pupils grow wider at night. Wide pupils let in more light. Glowing eyes also help them see in low light. A black cat's dark coat blends in with the shadows. It slinks quietly through alleys and over fences with soft pads on its paws. Black Cats Today Today, we know that black cats are not evil. It is a superstition that they cause bad luck. In England and Japan, it is good luck to spot a black cat. The End Baby Bug Kim and Carrots by Clara Guglielmi Kim has a shopping cart and a purse with pretend money in it. Kim and Carrots are making a store. The Kim and Carrots store has toys, cookies, and fruit for sale. Mom visits the store and buys two oranges. Now it is Kim's turn to go shopping. Kim buys a bear and an apple. Thank you very much, Carrots. Cup of tea. Here's a cup. And here's a cup, and here's a pot of tea. Pour a cup, and pour a cup, and have a drink with me. A first concept, Mouse Family Supper by Sheila Kirvin. Say, Mr. Mouse, won't you please tell me, where are you rolling that sweet green pea? I'm in a hurry now, can't you see? It's dinner for me and my family. At the Library by Carol L. Mackey I listen to funny stories. I clap and sing a rhyme. I color and glue a puppet. It must be story time. My mouse puppets skitter on sticks. A froggy puppet sings on my hand. Fuzzy animal puppets wiggle and giggle on my fingers. See my princess puppet dance on her strings. 
Do you have a puppet on your foot? Picture book by Mary Radhammer Kian. I love to look in my picture book. There is so much to see. I climb up on my grandma's lap so she can read it to me. Baby Workworm by Heidi B. Werner. In a car seat, on the floor, in a restaurant or a store. Upside down or right side up, with the cookie or with a cup. Wearing socks or maybe not. Baby likes to read a lot. The end. I look up. So let's start. I look up. Contents. I look up. Did you see it? I look up. I look up at the cow. I look up at the horse. I look up at the tractor. I look up at the barn. I look up at the hills. I look up at the stars. Did you see it? Cow, barn, hills, horse, stars. The end. Grandpa's photos. So let's start. Grandpa's photos. Contents. Grandpa's photos. Grandpa's photos. Grandpa showed me some photos. This was my school, he said. It looks like my school. This was my teacher, said Grandpa. My teacher was smart. These were my friends. Grandpa's friends looked happy. This was my home, he said. My home was small. This was me, said Grandpa. I looked at the photo. You look like me, I said. The end of Cam's walk. So let's start Cam's walk. Contents. Cam's walk. Cam's walk. Cam walked by the market. Dad said we need fruits. Cam walked by the bakery. We we need bread, Cam said. Cam walked by the hardware store. Dad said we need nails. Cam walked by the library. We need books, said Cam. Cam walked by the playground. Can I play? Cam asked. Cam stopped at the playground. The end. I hope you like the story. See you in the next video. Bye.